This is a brief overview of the i5 Pro X2 media card. Um, this is a standard SD uh, media card. This is 8 gigabytes in capacity. And the unique feature is the ability to transfer pictures and video um, from the card um, to the computer, uh, mobile, or iPad uh, via wireless transfer through Wi-Fi. Um, the card is an orange color, which helps you to distinguish it from your other media cards. Um, and in order to utilize the card, um, you, it requires two separate applications. One is called the iFi Helper, which runs in the background. And the other is an iFi Center app, which allows you to view your media files as well as to configure the card um, and the network uh, for operation. Um, I'm just going to my system tray. Um, select the icon for the iFi Helper and launch the iFi Center app from there. The main screen shows you um, uh, snapshots or thumbnails of images that have been transferred. And if we click on the configuration icon, it brings us to the configuration menu, which consists of several tabs. The network tabs um, is where you will configure your, your networks, your home network. Um, and this is for network mode. You would also configure your ad hoc network here. Um, the tab for direct mode, direct mode needs to be um, activated um, by check by clicking under the checkbox under manage. You'll see that there's an SSID for the card that can't be changed. Um, and there's also a password for the card that needs that is required for the configuration. And it also cannot be changed. Um, by, I'll just click on the start direct mode to illustrate um, how it works. Um, the card. Um, actually broadcast an SSID and is essentially uh, functioning as a hotspot to which the computer can attach um, for transfers between the two devices. And um, there's also um, the ability to select the directory um, or folder into which you want to save your JPEG file. And there's separate tabs for assigning the directory for your raw picture file and your video files separately. So you don't have to um, store everything in the same place. You can compartmentalize your files. There's also an iFi View, which is a service for a fee. You can uh, upload your pictures and archive them. There's also a notifications tab, a geotagging uh, tab, and a transfer mode tab, which I won't spend any more time on. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, just exit and um, actually eject the card. And now I will physically remove the card from the computer, uh, insert it into the camera, and take it for a brief spin. Um, as you can see, I've removed the, the card from my computer. And I'll be inserting it into a point-and-shoot digital camera. In this case, I'll use the Canon S90. Um, but any camera will do. If you have any question as to whether your camera is compatible, I will refer you to their website. They have a list of compatible devices there. Um, now I'll show you a little bit of a quirk. Since I had the card physically attached and it was broadcasting as SSID, it appears that the SSID persists, um, even though the camera hasn't been powered on. But if I click on it to connect, um, it will actually fail to connect to the hotspot because it's actually not available. Um, and I just did that to illustrate that point. Um, so I'll bring up my network list again. And we see that the iFi card does not appear. And so um, this will be the starting point for our demo. Um, now we'll power on the camera. And we'll wait um, a little bit of time. Uh, so that the iFi card can have a chance to actually power on and, and begin to broadcast this SSID. Um, that would be the expectation. However, um, it doesn't actually initiate its broadcast um, spontaneously. I believe this was designed on purpose uh, in order to prevent uh, unnecessary uh, battery drain from your camera as your camera is what's supplying any power for the iFi card. Um, but rather, you'd have to um, kind of kickstart the system by um, taking a picture.
And you know, as, I, as I'm speaking here, I'm just uh, scrolling up and down the network list, um, giving the card a chance to initiate its broadcast spontaneously. But since none of that is going on, I'm just going to snap a quick picture here. And then I'm going to wait. Um, and hopefully, um, it'll come up and, um, and connect. And as we wait here, we'll see that in a few seconds it, it comes up. It connects automatically, and any um, untransferred photos that reside in the camera um, will be transferred upon connection. OK, so I'm just going to snap a few more pictures um, in order to um, give you a sense of uh, uh, how smooth uh, this device operates. I'll snap a picture, and then you'll see how long it takes for the images to actually transfer. And as you can see here, um, it's pretty smooth. It's maybe a lag of a second or less um, between the time in which I take a picture and when they begin to initiate um, or upload into the computer. And that's pretty much it runs pretty smoothly. There's not much of a gap, or a lag, rather. So um, I'm just going to power down the camera and show you that the SSID will, um, will stop displaying on the networks list. And then um, once that happens, then your computer will connect to its default network as you based on your configuration. Um, in my case, it will default back to my home network. And that's the only drawback to utilizing this card in direct mode. It's that um, if you only have one Wi-Fi card on your computer, then you have to pick um, you know, one network to be connected to. You're either connected to the hotspot of the card or to your home network once the card releases you are able to restore um, internet connectivity by connecting back to your home network. And that's it.